indeed. <laughs> uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, and welcome to our service of uh, Holy Communion. It's wonderful to see you all. Uh, Theo is uh, remote hosting us from Brighton, but I think we have got um, all of the essential personnel who've got jobs so we'll uh, with us so we will uh, crack on so it's lovely to see you all and i we've got lots of wonderful notices and we will go into breakout rooms at the end uh, so do please stay um, at the at the end for the notices and the breakout rooms so let us just still ourselves In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And uh, we will operate this uh, as we've done in past weeks with everybody on mute. Uh, today, Joan is going to be giving the responses. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins and assure you of his eternal love in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just um, we're going to use the uh, alternative form of the Gloria rather than the Peruvian uh, Gloria that was distributed last week, I think. Uh, <clears throat> could I just ask you to check just in case that the group mute uh, hasn't worked. Could you just check that you are on mute apart from no. Joan? Thank you. You're not. Sorry, Joe. You're not on mute. I think everybody is now except you and me. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. And you'll find the collect on the weekly sheets. O God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And Peter will give us our first reading. First reading is from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, not all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith. Ministry in ministering. The teacher in teaching. The exhorter in exhortation the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. We do not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And our reading is uh, taken from Matthew chapter 16, uh, beginning at the 13th verse. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. I speak in the name of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you a story which um, some of you may have heard uh, before, um, but I think it, it's just germane to this particular uh, passage. And it's quite a few years ago now, probably 10, if not 20 years ago. Um, I happened to be watching an interview on television with um, one of the dragons 
on Dragon's Den. I won't um, name him. Um, and it, in it, this interview was going to different places and uh, it raised um, an issue where he, he said uh, when he was going through a particularly difficult time in his life, um, he was really distressed <clears throat> and he'd had quite a profound spiritual experience. Um, and he described something which uh, you know, we, we hear quite often uh, amongst those who've uh, experienced such things. So he felt a great uh, stillness uh, come over him. Uh, he felt connected. He felt the presence of the divine. And he very specifically uh, felt the call to become a Christian. Well, so far, so good. And then what struck me and the reason it's it stayed with me is that he then said in the interview, he said, um, um, that first of all, I'm not ready to do that, uh, which may have been uh, a little bit tongue in cheek. He said, I wasn't ready to give up some of the things I really like uh, doing. But he said, and I think he meant this more seriously, he said to whatever it was, he said, I am not worthy to follow. I'm not worthy to follow. And I'm going to come back to that. Now, today's gospel reading, uh, it's all the gospels have their own uh, highlights. And in Matthew, uh, this is a great hinge point um, when Peter identifies Jesus as the Messiah and the son of the living God. And from this point onwards, uh, the journey towards the Jerusalem and the passion uh, becomes uh, in, uh, inevitable. Now, <clears throat> just to recap. Remember that uh, as far as the Jewish people were concerned, uh, the Messiah was going to be uh, a great man like David. Uh, God inspired and favoured, but a human being. But here, Jesus is identified not just as the Messiah. And we hear this title, the Son of Man, which is being applied to the Messiah, but as the Son of the living God. Jesus has both titles. He is both the son of man and the son of God. He's human and he is God at the same time. So we have Peter's declaration and in Jesus's response, we have a number of things going on. And um, again, you know, we probably all know this, but uh, Peter, his birth name is Simon. And Jesus calls uh, Simon Peter and Peter comes from the Greek Petros uh, from rock. You know, when we talk about being petrified, it means we're so scared we've become uh, stock still as if we've been turned uh, to stone. And uh, we also, of course, in the Gospels we and um, in the rest of the New Testament, we hear Peter being referred to as uh, Kephas, C-E-P-H-A-S in transli transliterated into English which is the, in Aramaic, the spoken language, um, also means uh, rock. So this kind of nickname that Jesus gives um, um, Simon as he becomes Peter is, is absolutely crucial, crucial. But there's also a little subtle point here in that he says in that opening response, the opening of his response, he says, uh, Simon, son, Simon Peter, son of Jonah. Now, although elsewhere uh, Peter's father is called John, um, that may just be a different form of Jonah. But we do know from Bible studies that uh, you know, when we see names and coincidences, they are always worth uh, looking at. And of course, Jonah has a lot of resonance. A thing which um, uh, somebody told me the other day, and I've been working my way through the Old Testament uh, prophets just to see where they each of them uh, came from. Um, but I was told, um, and so I've not absolutely confirmed it, but uh, Jonah would appear to be the only of the Old Testaments to have come from Galilee, Jesus and Peter's home uh, territory. And of course, Jonah has a number of other things that he's remembered for. Perhaps most notably, 
running away from what God was calling him to, to such an extent that God had to send uh, the great fish uh, to grab him and bring him back uh, to do his, to carry out his mission to Nineveh. And of course, he does that. And then when he's done that, at Nineveh, they all repent in response to his message. And he then goes into an almighty sulk because God's not he's gone to all this trouble and then God doesn't destroy uh, the city. So, so Jonah has got uh, a lot of ways. He's not a great prophet, but God uh, works through him and Nineveh uh, repents. But of course, we are reading the gospel, hearing the gospel, knowing what is going to come for Peter. And the comparisons with Jonah um, are obvious. So maybe Jesus is also just uh, gently um, um, teasing uh, Peter with that uh, comparison. But with all of that, with all that we know that is going to come for Peter, we know that he's going to betray Jesus. We know that he's going to run away. We know that he's impetuous, that he doesn't always get things right. And responding in the transfiguration, let me build the three shelters and so on and so forth. But with all of that, he is the person Jesus says will be the rock upon which the church is to be built. And it's very clear that God doesn't choose normally to work through perfect people. You know, virtually everybody in the Old Testament and through the New Testament um, is flawed in some way because they are human beings. And that's why the Dragon's Den gentleman had it so wrong when he said, I am not worthy. Not worthy to follow Jesus. And he wasn't wrong for saying that he wasn't worthy. The point is, none of us is worthy. That's the point. With all of our unworthiness, all of our fallibility, all of our sin, Jesus loves us and calls us to follow him. He calls us to follow him like Jonah and like Peter, with all our failings, all our faults, all our trips. And through Jesus, God not only accepts us, but transforms us and he will work in us to build his kingdom. We have something of that in our reading from Romans. And this is one of the, the great passages describing you know, what the church is. And this Paul is describing this. He, he uses this phrase. He says we are members in Jesus and we are members in one another. And members in this sense is being used. Um, it's saying we're members in the sense that our arms and our legs are members of our body. That's the intimate way in which we are bound together as followers of Jesus, is, as followers of Jesus, that we are Jesus's body here on earth. And that is what the church is. The passage goes on to say you know, what we all know, really, that we're all equipped for different things. But every one of us has a role to play. Sometimes that role may just be being allowed, being vulnerable and letting others care for us. And every role is crucial to the health and well-being of the body. At times, perhaps particularly at this time, the challenges in front of us can seem insurmountable. But if we feel ourselves becoming disheartened, we don't have to look any further than the example of Peter, son of Jonah, who achieved incredible things, not through his own strength, 
but through his faith in the one he followed. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the creed. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust, and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe, we believe and, and trust, trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This, this is, is our, our faith. faith. We, we believe, believe and trust in, in one God, Father, Father Son, Son and Holy Christ. Spirit. Amen. Amen. And so we come to our prayers of intercession and the response to Lord hear us is Lord graciously hear us. And Lord we come before you this morning as members of your body on earth, as your church. Lord, we bring before you this week especially all those in all of our schools and most especially our church schools who are supporting students as they receive their results and as pupils are preparing for the new academic year. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for our suffering world. Lord, we pray that in all those places where there is division and hatred and conflict, that your healing spirit might flow, that peoples might be reconciled, and that your peace might reign. And we bring before you, especially this week, Lord, Belarus, the people there, and we pray that there might be a resolution to this time of political uncertainty and civil unrest. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. And Lord, we pray for our country, all of our people. And we pray especially, Lord, for Bister and Bucknell and Cabersfield, Launton and the surrounding area. We pray for our local community, Lord, and for all those we know are facing particular difficulty at this time. Through unemployment, through problems with finances. Who are concerned about returning to work. We hold them before you, Lord, and pray for them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us and in a few moments of quiet we bring before God all those we love and care for all those we know to be in particular need of prayer at this time We pray by name for Alice Collier, Amelia Woodgate, Anita Rance, Anne, Barbara, Barbara Adams, Brian Hilton, Brian Page, Caroline Douglas, Christopher Richards, Dan, Daphne Thompson, Delia Mason, Diana, Doreen Douglas, Douglas Wood, Elizabeth Gold, Gemma Anderson Gear, Gladys Truby, Harry Cribbs, Heather Southgate, Hilary Wright, Holly Grant, Eileen Ertle, 
Jan Holroyd, Jean Cottrell, Joan Hemsley, Joan Wyatt, Father John Bagley, John Dance, Joyce Corley, Judith Paddock, Julie Metcalf, Laura, Maggie McHattie, Marion Riley, Marina O'Callaghan, Mary Rowe, Michael, Monica Taphouse, Neil Bunker, Una Killen, Patricia Slade, Ray and Edna Mortiboys, Richard Edwards, Rita Gardner, Robert Munday, Sarah Jane Douglas, Sue, Susan Ann, Tia, Thomas Spence, Tracy Guttridge, Trevor Diaz-Skinawadina, Trish and Christopher Caddick, Zach Blyton and family. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear, hear us. us. And Lord, we bring before you all those who are grieving for loved ones who've died recently. Remembering before you particularly Donald Skelton, Gillian Hare, Helen Scott, Judith Inder, Rosemary Jackson, John Mackenzie, Ivy Middleton, Ursula Ryder, and Megan Savins. And in a year's mind, Lord, Stephen Adamson, George Rogers, and Jeremy Dixon. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And so we come to uh, the piece and um, who do we have? A well, I have a couple of anonymous ones. So I will just uh, say uh, we can share the piece with, we can borrow the namaste. We can just give each other a friendly wave or we can use the British Sign Language, which is peace be with you. Um, forgive me if I've uh, messed that up. Or you can use uh, all of the above. We'll then be going into our offertory hymn, which is And Can It Be, which Robert and Jackie are going to play and sing for us. Um, and with regard to it being an offertory hymn, uh, can I just uh, mention that, of course, we're unable to take physical collections at this time and we haven't been able to throughout the uh, lockdown period. And in the last email that came out with the um, pew sheet, uh, it has bank details for the three churches. And if you would like to and are able to make donations um, via bank transfer, then the details are uh, on there. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. I should gain 
and in interest in my Saviour's blood. Come in for me, who caused his pain, for me, who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Tis mystery all. The immortal dies, who can explore this strange design? In vain the firstborn seraph tries to sound the depths of love divine. Tis mercy, O oh, let earth adore, let angel minds inquire no more. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine eye diffused a quickening ray, I woke the dungeon flame with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? No condemnation now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head, and clothed in righteousness divine. Bored I approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. It here on mute. Thank you. That was just to save you from my singing. Wise and gracious God, you spread a table before us. Nourish your people with the word of life and the bread of heaven. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things. He was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death 
by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so, Father, Calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world. Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the, Holy send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Blessing and, and honour and, and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and, and ever. ever. Amen. Amen.
every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim, we proclaim the Lord's death, death until, until he comes. comes. the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The body of Christ. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The blood of God, our Father, you have raised our humanity in Christ and have fed us with the bread of heaven. Mercifully grant that, nourished with such spiritual blessings, we may set our hearts in the heavenly places. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. In a moment we will have our final blessing and uh, final a hymn which is great is thy faithfulness uh, but we have some wonderful notices because so many good things are happening uh, in the church um, next week we have a nine o'clock uh, communion service and we are then going to have a patronal service of uh, evening prayer um, for St Lawrence's in the garden of um, Home Farm uh, so that is Tina's. Uh, people are welcome. There will be an email coming out. Uh, we will need people to let us know if they would like to come. Uh, we can get quite a few people appropriately socially distanced uh, in the garden. If the weather's bad, we have uh, two barns available, which we will uh, be using. Uh, but we will need to know in advance so that we can check uh, check numbers. So, as I say, an email will be coming about that uh, out about that shortly. Um, we have, uh, and sticking with services for a moment, the following week uh, we will again have uh, our nine o'clock uh, communion and we will then have uh, our patronal even song for St Mary's at 6pm uh, um, and I hope uh, many of you will join us uh, for that. We have a number of great events coming up uh, on uh, Monday the 30th, Bank Holiday Monday, we have uh, the um, uh, afternoon team, cream tea so in Bucknell at uh, Manor Farm at uh, Kate's between 3 and uh, 5 uh, p.m. And again, we will be keeping appropriately socially distanced, but please do support that. And then on the 12th of September, we have both the ride and stride going on. And um, that's organised by Oxford Historic Churches Trust. And all the money raised from that is split between OHCT uh, and the Sponsees Home Church. Um, as far as I know at the moment, we just have Chris Frost from St Mary's uh, riding. And Chris is looking for sponsors. Obviously, we can't collect sponsors after the service. But if you can support Chris uh, with sponsorship, that would be uh, wonderful. Uh, also, on the 12th, we have uh, a produce and cake stall. Uh, taking place in Launton uh, between 10 and 12 noon in front of the parish hall. And if you could support that, uh, both by offering produce, uh, chutneys, jams, cakes and so on, um, please do contact Joan. And of course, please do come along and uh, uh, buy uh, some produce. Unfortunately, I can't be there. I would be on holiday, but uh, uh, I'll have to see if I can put some dibs on uh, some of the jams and chutneys. I think that is all the notices I had. Um, church wardens and deputy church wardens, if I have missed anything, please shout. Um, Peter, I just wasn't sure about the 6th of September. Did you say it was 9 o'clock? Because I think the family service is 10 o'clock. Oh, oh, thank you so much, Celia, for a 
yes well yes well done it's our family it's our family service sunday and so of course we will be having our family service at uh, 10 a.m which is going to have a uh, patronal theme uh, that uh, that day reflected St Mary's and our church buildings and all that we do so please uh, do join with us in that also thank you for that correction Celia and my apologies so with that let us just still ourselves for our final blessing May the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And our recessional hymn is Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness O oh God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thou changest not Thy compassions, they fail not. As Thou hast been, Thou forever wilt be. Great is Thy faithfulness, Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. A peace that endureth, thine omnipresence to cheer and to guide, strength for today, a bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine, and ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Well, thank you, Robert and Jackie, and thank you, Peter, for reading. Thank you, Joan, for the responses and thank you, Theo, for uh, our technical management.